All right, so what I have on my little um, uh, display here is I have four, um, four hydrofluoric acid molecules. And so there we go. And since hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid, you can see that these are undissociated um, in solution. They're not going to break up and make hydronium like hydrochloric acid would do. If this was hydrochloric acid, each of these um, acid molecules would actually be deprotonated by the water, and you'd actually have just like a chloride ion and a hydronium ion. But that is not the case with a weak acid. They stay together. They do not dissociate completely. They don't dissociate to much extent at all. That's why the Ka value is so low. How are you feeling? Alright, so if we start to titrate this with sodium hydroxide, I do want to make sure that you understand that as I add a sodium hydroxide, um, it would be already ionized. It would be in water like this, yeah? And the sodium is going to be a spectator ion, so it's just going to sit there. Now, the hydroxide is an ion, and the ion dipole interaction here is going to be stronger than that covalent bond, so it's going to be able to deprotonate the hydrochloric acid. So I'll be left with a fluoride ion and water. So this is fluoride at this point. How do you feel? That change the, does that change the pH much, even though I just added a base? Not really. Still acidic. Well, not a little acidic. Um, this fluoride, remember, is a weak base, and so it will raise, raise the pH more than like a chloride. Alright, so just for fun, Let's go ahead and add another sodium hydroxide, and it would already be dissociated. And so the sodium is going to be a spectator ion here. And then the hydroxide ion will remove the hydrogen from the hydrochloric acid. We'll have another water and another fluoride ion. Nice. So um, at this point, we have two acid particles and we have two conjugate base particles. And when we talk about weak acids or any acids, HA is the acid. So this is HA and the A would be the fluorine. And this is my negative A, my F minus, which is my conjugate base. Now this is what's called mid, mid, uh, mid equivalence. Like I'm halfway to being equal acid and base and being neutral acid and acid. Okay? Um, now why did I tell you that? What does it matter? It's important. It's really, it's really important. Um, but can you kind of hold that thought and see how um, I have equal, right? Now let's just say that um, this is a solution. I just made the solution. I've stopped the titration. I'm gonna. I just have the solution now. I'm not titrating anymore. Just have this nice solution of fluoride and hydrochloric acid. Well, what if I wanted to um, instead of adding the base, take yourself a little hydronium real quick. Get your hydronium. Get a water and a hydrogen. Hydronium, what's going to happen? Is it going to acidify the solution? Guess what's going to happen? The Ka value for hydrochloric acid is so low that that hydrogen is actually going to make HF. Does HF lower the pH? Does this lower the pH? If I, can I plug HF into the pH formula? No, no, this is not hydronium. This does not change the pH. See what I'm saying? So I just added a strong acid, and the pH didn't change a bit. Quit. Quit. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what happened there is I added a strong acid, and the pH didn't really change. That's called a buffer. In organic oh, systems, buffer. Buffering. So do you understand that you have a buffer system in your blood? Your blood is a buffer system. And so it is a a bio. <laughs> so your blood is actually a buffer system. It's a carb carbonate carbonic acid buffer system. And so that's good because sometimes you eat acidic food. Sometimes your muscles make lactic acid. Um, when you breathe carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide is carried in your blood, it makes a an acid. So that's good. Buffer system or system where they can absorb some acid and some base, and the pH doesn't change much. You wouldn't want your pH changing a bunch in your blood, would you? No, because a lot of times changes in pH denature catalysts like enzymes in your body that keep you from dying. Okay? So buffers are good, and sometimes chemists, they want a solution to stay 
at a certain um, pH, and they don't want pHs to change either. Now, this is still my buffer. What if I come in and I added a hydroxide off of a sodium hydroxide or whatever? There's a hydroxide. And if I just was floating around in the water, it would raise the pH, wouldn't it? But check this out. This weak acid is going to be able to absorb that hydroxide and make water. Now my pH didn't really change. So um, a buffer is a, is a weak acid, HF, okay, and it's conjugate base in equal concentrations. So if I add a little bit of acid, no big deal. The, um, the conjugate base can absorb it and make an acid. If I add a little bit, and it's a weak acid, so it doesn't affect pH. If I add a little bit of hydroxide, no big deal. Um, where was my hydroxide at? Oh, yeah. If I add a little bit of hydroxide, no big deal. The acid can absorb it and make water. So I can go back and forth adding acid and base until I run out of particle. And I don't really change pH much. So that's a buffer. I'm about to explain it several more times. But that's a good way to get started. A little magnet so the children play with. How are you feeling? Not a big deal, right? All right, so um, we'll come back to this and we'll make us a buffer again. Actually, let's just go ahead and do it. Um, go ahead and let's make a, a good little buffer. Let's get us two, um, two acids, so two hydrofluoric acids. Two hydrofluoric acids. And um, let's just, we're just going to start here, here in a minute. Can you just give me like two acids? Just hold that thought and then we're coming back, okay? We're going to make a hydrofluoric acid buffer solution. Subconscious, like, oh. um, all right, so don't look at the screen, everything's fine. Doubt's left, doubt's left, doubt's left. Um, all right, so buffers. Buffers are just like when the, your favorite song is buffering when you're trying to watch a video. Buffers just are not fun, but that's okay. I'm going to try to make it okay. So we're going to talk about first the common ion effect and buffered solutions and, and yep. Okay, so I'm going to make some of this go away for a minute so you don't freak out. Are you good with the fact that hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid and equilibrium is going to lie far to the left because K is low? Are you good? All right, cool. Now, let's just say you have your HF. It's on your table, right? If I go back over there, which I guess I'll go back over there. I know. Um, I say I'm going to go back over there. What is my problem? Oh, I know what my problem is. And it's still going to have a white thing across it. Yep. Okay. I'm not very smooth with this. I'm doing the best I can. So if I have hydrofluoric acid, and let's just say I add some sodium fluoride. So make us a sodium fluoride. Do, 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 da, da, da. If I add that to water, is sodium fluoride soluble? Of course it is, because you have a plus one cation and a minus one anion, and so the Coulomb attraction is easily overcome by the dipole ion interaction with the water. <laughs> like, what have I got myself into? So, yeah. So check this out. If I did have, and you will have a few, if I did have some hydrofluoric acid that had dissociated, I would have a, um, some fluorides floating around. See how that is a common ion if I did have a fluoride? It's a common ion. I just added a stress to the system. And so what the system is going to do to take fluorides out is it's going to remake hydrofluoric acid. Now I've reduced the number of fluorides. So I'm going to go back to the formula and show that one more time. I'm going to get my exercise today walking back and forth. It's going to be great. Um, so if I add um, if I add some potassium fluoride or sodium fluoride, um, I'm going to be adding a common ion to the solution, and that's going to shift equilibrium back to the left, back to HF. So now that soluble, well, excuse me, now that weak acid that barely dissociates is going to dissociate even less. How does that make you feel? 
You know, okay? This is the Chatelier, but it just happens to be ions. And so this is called a common ion effect because fluoride is a common ion of hydrofluoric acid and they did potassium chloride, but sodium fluoride would be the same. So <clears throat> if I added sodium fluoride and the equilibrium shifted back to the left, what would happen to the pH of the solution? It would go up with it. You see that? Am I doing a magic tricky? Okay. It's not a big deal. It's a big deal when you're all by yourself trying to do it though. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, fluoride is the common ion and it's going to shift equilibrium back to the left. When that happens, it will reduce the hydronium ions in solution, which will help to raise the pH. Well, that's smart, aren't you? Like if you can handle about half the words coming out of my mouth, you're good. All right, so check this out. What if I had some ammonia in water? I would ammonia and water, ammonia is a weak base. So it would form hydroxide and ammonium. Well, if I added ammonium chloride, the ammonium chloride is soluble and it would break up into chloride and ammonia. Ammonium. Anyway, notice how this is a common ion. I'm adding stress to the system to this common ion. So equilibrium is going to shift back to the left. And it's going to make more ammonia. So what's going to happen? In ammonia itself, NH3 does not change the pH. It's not until it gets into the water and creates hydroxide that the pH actually goes up. So what's going to happen to the pH if I add this common ion and equilibrium shifts, everybody? The pH is going to go down because I've removed hydroxides. You good? Last period, no joke, I had to spend about five minutes explaining that. Are you sure? That, are you sure that you understand removing hydroxides lowers the pH? You sure? No, I was just like, well, okay. So anyway, uh, we're gonna get done early, I think. It is what it is, though. I don't mind explaining it. Seems pretty simple. All right. So here, what what is a what is a, what is a pH? Oh, it's a buffer. A buffer is a system that resists changes in pH, and so it's gonna be able to absorb extra acid or ex or extra base and not have the pH change much. And so, um, like I said, this is good for biological systems because you don't want your um, pH to go too much up or down. And it's also good for chemical systems. Some chemical reactions uh, prefer acidic environments that, and they, or a basic environment and the pH needs to stay the same. So a buffer, what is a buffer? A buffer is a weak acid and a salt, a salt. Um, so what, is, what am I talking about with a salt? Okay, so let's go back to our little movie. This is the hardest thing in this whole class, by the way. So if you're wondering why I'm going so slow and play with magnets, like there's a reason. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead. Um, Y'all do with the fact that we have hydrofluoric acid. We have two hydrofluoric acids. And let's add two sodium chlorides. All right, so... Don't put the sodium fluoride in yet. Is this hydrofluoric acid, is it going to be able to resist changes in pH if I add acid to it? If I add hydrofluoric acid to hydrofluoric acid, is the pH going to go down? Is there anything this can do to, to absorb hydrogens? Can this? No. No, of course if I add two acids together, like it's going to become more acidic. There's no, so this is not a buffer. A buffer is a weak acid and it's conjugate base in a salt. Now, I have to add fluoride in a salt to this solution because this doesn't dissociate. I cannot get little f's to be floating around by themselves by just adding more acid. It's a weak acid. It's not going to break up. So if I add sodium fluoride to this, it's going to break apart. It's going to ionize completely because it's soluble. So... When I say that a buffer is a weak acid and it's conjugate base in a salt, I mean that I'm going to have an acid solution, then I'm going to get some white ionic solid, I'm going to throw it in the beaker, and it's going to dissolve, and now I can absorb acid and base. So check it out. Let's get a hydroxide. I'm going to miss this later. <clears throat> if I add some a strong base to the system, if I have a hydroxide, what's going to be able to absorb it? The acid. So this by itself would raise the pH, but in solution, it's going to form water and fluoride ions. Have I changed the pH much? Nope. 
Boron is a weak base. It will change a little bit, but not really. Cool. Now, that buffered <coughs> the added um, the added hydroxide. Well, let's add a little bit of acid and see what happens. Do, 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 do. What's going to absorb this extra hydronium? What's going to be able to buffer this? The fluoride. It's going to form hydrofluoric acid. But check it out. This hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. This does not change the pH because it's not hydronium. And pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, not the hydrofluoric acid concentration. Remember, you can't take and do pH of weak acids just based on how many weak acids are in there. Are y'all okay? What I said? You cannot calculate the pH of a weak acid by taking the negative log of the weak acid. Oh, you mean just the whole, how I did it. Yeah. All right, so I have fluoride, right? And I add hydronium. So I have an acid. And my buffer solution contains fluoride. So it's going to be able to absorb this acid by making hydrofluoric acid in water. So I didn't change the pH. This doesn't make any difference to the pH. That doesn't either. Not really. So that's a perfect buffer. See how that, that solution can absorb extra acid and extra base. You, you, you don't have a buffer if you just have a weak acid. You have to have its conjugate base and salt added to it too. It can neutralize acid or base. A buffer would have to do both. Okay? How you feeling? Alright, let's go back to that scary pop point. I felt like, oh, I guess it's behind here. All right, anyway, so buffers are going to resist changes in pH. Now, this would work the same if we had a weak base and it's in a, in a salt that had its conjugate acid. Like, for example, ammonia is a weak base, and if I had ammonium chloride, that would work. Okay, so moving on. So here's the deal. If I had acetic acid, don't look at the rest of this yet. If I had acetic acid in water, it would make a few hydronium ions and a few acetate ions. This is not going to be a good enough buffer because it won't have hardly any of these. Are you still fill in me. So, if I want to make a buffer, I'm going to come in and add some sodium or potassium acetate. And that will completely dissociate. And now I'll have a bunch of the base and I'll have a bunch of the acid because the acid doesn't break up. And then I'll have a good buffer system. Now if I add some sodium hydroxide or whatever hydroxide, right? If I come in and I add some hydroxide, do to do, do la la la. There's a hydroxide. It's gonna get with this hydrogen and make water. See it? If I come in and I uh, bring in a hydronium, now um, this hydrogen, that H, will make the acid molecule. Okay. But you want to have. You want to have uh, a good concentration of both the acid and base. And in a perfect and a good buffer, you're going to have equal. You're going to have equal acid and equal conjugate base. All right, so again, the ability, buffering capacity is how much extra or added strong acid or strong base it can absorb without changing the pH too much. Um, the higher concentration of the acid and its conjugate base, obviously, the more little HFs I have here, the more hydroxides it can absorb. And the more fluorides I have, the more acids it can absorb. So I need a bunch of those little circles if I want to add something to it. That's all this is saying. Um, I ran into this. So anyway, um, I want to really have equal concentrations, okay? Don't freak out. Everything's fine. Um, I do that sometimes. In your calculator, just for fun, hit the log of 1 and tell me what it is. Or in your head, right. But prove it to yourself real quick. So the log of 1 is 0. Do you see it? Good. All right, so here's the deal. In a system, pH of the system is equal to the pKa of an acid. <coughs> Which the pKa is just a, a measurement of strength. Remember the do now and you're feeling okay about it, remember? We said that the phosphoric acid um, 
Remember, it's pKa was like three. Remember, and then the carbonic acid we had said it's pKa was like seven. Okay. So if I, what's going to happen is they're going to say, hey, create a buffer whose pH is around seven, and you're like, okay, well that's seven. Which of these acids are you going to pick to make the buffer? Well, the pH should be 7. Which one would I pick? Maybe the carbonic acid? pH would be 7 equals 7. This is looking good. Now, do you remember how I told you a good buffer would have equal this and that? And the log of 1, mm -hmm. what's divided by sub 1? So, <laughs> how you feeling? If these questions are really easy, what's going to happen is they're going to be like, there's not a buffer that has a pH of 8.2. And then they're going to give you a list of Ks. And you'll hit negative log in your calculator. Or you can do it in your head, right? You chop 2 down, flip the sign, do that. Pick the best one. And, um... If you have equal concentrations, this is the same thing. But let's just let's just pretend. Let's just pretend that instead of saying, oh, there's not a buffer that has a pH of seven, what if they said six point seven? Well, seven doesn't equal six point that was right. Seven doesn't equal six point seven. So now just off the top of your head, using your common sense which I don't know if it's a thing anymore, um, but just using your common sense, would I need in my buffer to make a pH of 7, would I need more of the conjugate base or the acid? Which one would I want more of? Seven is too high. Which one would I want more of? The acid? Do you feel me on that? You get it? Yeah, that's all. That's all this is today, my friends. That's it. That is the whole lesson. I was feeling a little good about it when I came in. I mean, it is way more confusing than I, it, it, you thank me later. But it's it's very confusing. But the way we're doing this is good. So that would mean plus. Um, and we don't have to do this part with all these things. I mean, certainly if they told you the acid concentration and the conjugate base concentration, I mean, you can plug them in and get the pH. That's not a problem. Um, but that's not how it goes. What I just said is how it goes. I don't know what I did, but I'm really sorry. Mm -hmm. Baby, come back. Baby, come back. I hope I have another bathroom. I think I just made a mistake there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did it happen after I threw the batter in the garbage? Yeah. I need you anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, if I wanted to drop the pH a little bit, obviously I would need more acid than base, and that's not a problem. Okay? So, you ready to see some of these problems? This is called the Henderson Hockelbach formula. Ooh. It's like a book. And what? It's like a yeah. So, anyway, that's just negative log pK. Negative log p. Just negative log. Okay. Okay, so you want to pick the one that has the pKa close to the pH. I just showed you that. I'm just going to have this and explain it myself. <laughs> it's better. It's better. Okay. So let's just say I wanted to have um, a buffer with a pH of 8. That's situation number one. And I wanted in situation number two, different situation, I wanted a buffer with a pH of eight. I mean three. <laughs> so, <laughs> with your friends, their buffers are going to be made weak acids. So they're both weak acids, okay? So talk to your friends, which one would have uh, the stronger weak acid as its um, major component? Okay, so think about that. Think about the formula. Okay. 
So one of these has a, a is going to have a stronger acid, and one of them's going to have a weaker acid. So you know which one would that be? <coughs> <laughs> okay, so if I wanted to make a buffer with a high pH, which H would, H would be a high pH? Abby, would I want a weak acid or a strong acid? I would say Right, and that kind of makes sense because pH is high, but then also it would have a high pKa because it's a weak acid. You know about, you good? That's the warm up. I was like, which one? What's the pKa? And the weaker acid had a higher pKa, and then we did that a couple of days ago too. Yeah. So then, of course, the stronger weak acid would um, help design a buffer with a lower pH or more acidic pH. And that makes sense, too, when I say that out loud. Like, a stronger weak acid would make a solution with a lower pH. See what I'm saying? But then the pKa thing works out, too. The lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So that's what I just said. But with the more words... And less popsicle sticks. So, here's the deal. Mathematically, how do buffers work? I just showed you how they work with circles. But just for fun, if you like math, you know, the log of 10 is 1. I don't, you don't need to know this. But, anyway, if I have 10 more times base than I do acid, then the pH is only going to change 1. Or if I had 10 times more acid than base, the pH is only going to change 1. So, that's how buffers work. But you don't need to. If you can follow me on the other, you're good. All right, now, don't freak out. Everything's fine. Suppose you're required to create a buffer, a 0.5 liter buffered solution where the acid and the conjugate base have similar concentrations. That's good. Now, you know, they have similar concentrations. Guess what that means? That means that the plus the log of blah, 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 blah is zero, right? Because it's one. You still with me? All right, so what you and your little friends need to figure out is you need to figure out using these two acids below, their Ka values, pick the best conjugate base pair or acid and conjugate base pair would, that would make um, a buffered solution with a pH of 4.80. So figure that out first. You should be able to do that in about two seconds. Did you do it? This is as easy as it seems. Which I told myself this morning. So which acid would be the best one? The first one or the second one? Jaleel? So which one? Okay, how did you figure that out? Yeah, and they're both weak acids, but this one's pretty strong. It has a positive, um, well, that's like 10 to the, well, no, it wouldn't be negative. It'd be like 10, no, I'm doubt not. It would be like 10 to the 0.5 or something. So pKa, we, we, want, we want the acid that has the pKa that's equal to the pH. This is 10 to the 0.5. If I chop that tree down, okay, I'm going to get a pH of 0.5. If I chop this tree down and flip this on, I'm going to get a pH of 5. Are you, are you, yeah. Do you understand that the pH needs to be equal to the pKa?
start when we're doing this on the AP exam or in here. Um, notice it kind of starts to get a little bit more specific, and it says estimate the concentrations of weak acid and conjugate base that are necessary to produce an initial pH of 4.80 and prevent a significant change. So if this part right here, we don't really have to worry about that right now. Um, but go ahead and in your calculator, get the specific pKa value of acetic acid. Go ahead and do that. And then with your friends, figure out if I need more acid or more conjugate base to make the system be what they want. big deal but um, just if you're wondering okay so here they took and they found the uh, pKa's and all that and then they just filled it in and that was not a big deal um, we don't have to look at all this math we don't have to do this I'm sure okay I promise all right so here's another example suppose we're required to create a 1.35 liter phosphate buffer solution with a pH of 7.29 we're going to, here's three acid base um, pairs down here, or three acids, um, and we're going to pick the one that would be the best, um, best choice. So, um, and then after that, you're going to estimate what we would have to do to that buffer to produce a pH of 7.29, okay? Can y'all swing this by yourselves? Talk to your people. They actually gave the PKAs. I mean, okay, sorry. They'll do that on the AP exam sometimes. Sometimes they won't. You have to go through the chocolate and tree notes anyway. If you're looking at this going, is this a CC? Yes. Okay, so what did you get? Um, Victoria, which acid would be the best one? The second one? And so in the buffer system, would I need to have more acid or conjugate base? Yeah, because the desired pH is higher than the uh, buffer solution is going to be. Okay, cool. Why was the second one? Because the pH is equal to pKa plus a little bit of a number. Yeah. So that's that's the closest one. And if some of y'all, I think a couple of you, it might benefit you for me to show you how to get it to be exactly 7.29. Like, what would you have to do exactly? But I'm not doing that for everybody. I don't mean that ugly. It's not worth it. I did that last year. It was a terrible. It basically took everything we had learned and flushed it all down the toilet. It was terrible. It was the worst day. Because it was complicated enough to make you forget everything that was easy. And all I, and what we're doing is all you need to know. And you'll see that when we do the FRQ tomorrow. I've asked people about this. Anyway, this is what we don't have to do. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, we don't need to do that. So, 
this is the last one I want to do with you guys, and then I'm going to show you your homework, practice stuff. So a buffered solution was created by mixing solutions of uh, this acid and its um, salt with its conjugate base. See how that's with the H off? See that? Okay. So the final pH was measured to be 2.89 and Ka was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth, which species uh, the acid or the conjugate base has the highest concentration. This is the same thing that we just did. So figure that out. You're going to need to probably, probably going to need a calculator, maybe. Well, we might not. Oh, we don't need a calculator. All right, so, because it's pretty far. So pH is equal to the negative, no, no negative log, just the outside. What is the, yeah, whatever. I have too many things in my brain. At least my pen works now. Okay, so check it out. Estimate the pKa. They want a pH of 2.89. So which one is in higher concentration, the acid or the conjugate base? Plus more aging. Then A minus. Okay, cool. That's it. Great. Um, and so a few of you, like I said, we might want to go back and actually do the specifics, but I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it for everybody. It's not worth it. I've had conversations with other people that teach this, and, and, and like I'm sure, okay? Trust me. All right, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and get our little answer key, and what y'all are going to